a long time ago, there was a miller and he had three sons. Now the miller was getting on a bit and the sons were grown up and when he died, the miller left the mill to the eldest son, the horses to the middle son and to the youngest, he left his cat. Well, the eldest boy was extremely pleased. He liked being a miller. He'd worked and helped his father for years. He knew and understood the mill. He was certain he could make a good business of it. Now, the second son was also pleased because he liked the horses. He understood them. And the eldest son immediately said, well, you can stay here and you can work for me. So they were both sorted. They'd work for each other and help each other. But they both laughed at the youngest one. Just getting the cat? Well, the cat is useful, they, but you know, it catches mice, it catches rats, and there's a lot of them around a mill. But, well, they said, you'll have to work for us, you'll have to do lifting and carrying and all the odd jobs to earn your keep. Well, the youngest son, his name was Jack, he just shrugged and said, yeah, okay. And he went up to his room where the cat was asleep and he sat in his bed and he stroked the cat behind his ears and said, well, puss, it's you and me now. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm glad I've got you, but dad could have left me something, some money or one of the horses or something to earn a living. And the cat looked up and said, meow, well, you've got me. What more could you want? I'm fed up with being poor, meow, said the cat. I would like to be rich, so I'm going to make you rich as well. The boy blinked. A talking cat? Well, of course I can talk, said the cat. If you'd listened, you'd have known a long time ago. Mow. Did Dad know you could talk? Of course, said the cat, and he rolled over with his le legs in the air and said, Scratch my tummy. In fact, said the cat, I asked your father to leave you to me. Oh, said the boy. Well, I'm awfully glad I've got you. It'll be fun having a talking cat as a companion. Mow, said the cat. It's going to be more than fun. Now, we have business to attend to. Now, I believe you have a few pennies, a few coins in your savings box. Well, yes, said the boy. Good, said the cat. Now, I need you to go into town and to buy a fine pair of soft leather boots for me. Boots, said the boy. Well, why not, said the cat. A cat has standards. A cat needs a certain style. Soft leather boots, mind you. Well, Jack emptied his box and there was more money in there than he thought. And he said, very well. And he said to his brothers, I've just got to pop into town. Does anybody need anything? And they said, no, but hurry back. There's work to do. So the boy went to the cobblers and he explained what he needed. And the cobbler said, well, as it happens, I've got some very soft children's boots. And one of the pairs looked about right for the cat. So the boy bought them. And on the way home, he passed the milliner's. And in the window was a small child's hat. It was green velvet with a lovely turned up brim. It was very stylish. And the boy had just enough money. And so he thought, well, if the cat wants boots, he'll need a hat. So he bought the hat and on the way home, he found a beautiful pheasant feather, long and red and gold and black. And he picked it up and he stuck it into the brim of the hat. And when he went back, he went straight up to his room where the cat was just finishing his nap. The cat tried on the boots and they fitted perfectly and they loved the hat. So the boy took his penknife and cut two holes for the cat's ears to help the hat sit on. And the cat did look rather magnificent. He strutted this way and he strutted that way and he looked in the old cracked mirror and he said, yes, I will do nicely. Now, I'm off out, I have work to do, and I expect your brothers have one or two jobs for you as well. Well, the boy went downstairs and started lifting sacks and loading the hopper, putting the wheat in and supervising the millstones. But the cat went across the fields 
And there he waited and watched, until a fine hare came lolloping between the wheat, and the cat readied and pounced and killed the hare, threw it over his shoulder and carried it all the way up to the royal palace, where he went into the king's presence, for a cat may look at a king. And he produced the hare and he said, Sire, this is a gift from my lord, the Marquis of Carabas. The king looked at the hare. It did look very fresh and very tasty. He licked his lips and said, Do I know the Marquis of Carabash? The cat took off his hat and bowed beautifully and said, Sire, no, we are new to the area. My lord, the Marquis, would like to come and pay his respects one day. Oh, I'm sure that can be arranged, said the king. And he clapped his hands and ordered the cook to, to prepare the hare for his evening meal. Well, over the next few days, the cat caught lovely fat pheasant. And he also caught a magnificent salmon. And he took those to the king. And the king was becoming intrigued by this Marquis of Carabash. And so he said to the cat, I would like to meet him one day, but not tomorrow because I'm going driving with my daughter. We're going on a tour of the kingdom. And the cat said, Sire, I'm sure any day that suits you will suit my master. Well, the following day, the cat said to the boy, Come, Jack, you must go swimming in the river today. And Jack said, I can't, I've got work. My brothers will kill me. And the cat said, forget them. They won't be a problem much longer. And so Jack and the cat went down to the river's edge, where the boy took off his clothes and jumped into the river. It was a hot day and it was a lovely day for a swim, much nicer than working in the mill. Meanwhile, the cat hid all of Jack's clothes behind a large stone and just in time, for he heard the rumbling of wheels and the of soldiers' horns. It was the king coming with an escort of fine soldiers and next to him in the carriage was his daughter, the beautiful princess. Well, the cat jumped up in front of the carriage and said, Sir, 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 stop the carriage. Something awful has happened. And the king put his head out of the window and said, Hey, puss, what's the matter? And the cat said, Sire, it is my master, the Marquis of Carabash. He went swimming and thieves came and took his clothes. They were so richly embroidered with gold they couldn't resist them. And now my poor master is in the water and he, he can't get out and he'll drown if he's in much longer. And so the king clapped his hands and said, I have a box on the back. I had been going to spend the night with my friend the Duke tonight, so I have clothes with me. And he clicked his fingers and said, find a suit for the Marquis of, of Carabas. And so the soldiers got down and they opened the king's luggage and they found a very fine blue silk suit some shoes and a hat and then they all averted their gaze while Jack the miller's son got out and dressed himself in the king's clothes. Oh my did he look good and he knew it. Jack the miller's son did look fine. He had a fine mop of ginger hair and the blue silk suit made him look magnificent. Certainly like a marquis and not a miller's son. Well, said the king, it's nice to see you okay. Um, can I give you a lift somewhere? And the cat, before Jack could interrupt and say, no, thank you, sire, the cat said, yes, please, my lord. The Marquis was just returning to his castle. Jack looked at the cat and went, what? And the cat said, Shh. and so Jack said, yes, I was just returning to my castle. A, a lift would be wonderful, sire, if that's all right. Where is the castle? said the king. And the cat said, just over two hills in that direction. And so Jack, the miller's son, jumped into the carriage. And the miller's son, enjoying being a marquis, settled down and sat and talked to the king and to the beautiful princess. Well, the cat didn't delay. He ran ahead of the carriage took a shortcut through the fields and through the woods until he came to the fields around the castle. And there he stopped every farm worker he saw and said, 
If anyone, in, anyone, especially the king, asks you who owns this land, you must say it's the Marquis of Carabas. Well, the farm workers were bemused and they said, no, it's the ogre's land. And the cat said, it won't be after today. Now, just do as I say, or I won't catch any mice or rats. And I will make sure no other cat ever catches mice or rats for you again. Well, said the farm workers, probably. Uh, yeah, yeah, all right. It's the Marquis of Carabas, said the cat. Don't forget. And then the cat ran ahead to the castle and he knocked on the great wooden door and the ogre himself opened the door and he was fat and slobbery and smelly and his nose dripped and he was all and flies buzzed around his head. He was fairly revolting. And the cat bowed very politely and said, Sir, do I have the honour of addressing the great powerful magician ogre? You do, said the ogre. What's it to you, cat? And the cat bowed again and said, My master, the Marquis of Carabas, is on his way here, and he is also a great magician. And he is coming to ask for a magical competition. But of course, he will only compete with the very best, and he has heard you are the best. Of course I am, said the ogre. I can change myself into anything. Oh, that is very good, said the cat. Uh, but he's asked me if I could possibly see a, a little demonstration before he comes and joins us. Demonstration, said the ogre. Yeah, all right then. And he shook himself and he turned into a great yellow lion. <laughs> and the cat, hair on end, sprang out of the way before the lion ate him. Oh, th that's excellent, said the cat. I suppose you couldn't do something a little bit bigger, could you? Bigger, roared the ogre, coming back to himself. I can do as big as a house. And he stepped into the courtyard and shook himself and became a great big grey elephant with huge flapping ears and <coughs> lifted his trunk. And the cat looked up in absolute amazement and said, wow. But forgive me, Sir Ogre, that is a little bit showy-offy, isn't it? What do you mean, said the ogre, coming back to himself. Well, said the cat, anybody can do big and fancy. It takes real skill to become something small and delicate. Small and delicate, said the ogre. Like what? A mouse, said the cat. I can do mouse, said the ogre. And he shook himself and became a little pink tail. And the cat licked his whiskers, pounced and ate the mouse all up, crunching the bones and wiping his whiskers. Excellent, said the cat, and he turned out of the castle courtyard over the drawbridge just as the carriage was trundling along the lane. The cat stopped in front of the carriage, took off his hat and said, My lord the king and Marquis of Carabas, we welcome you to the Marquis's castle. The boy, Jack, still pretending to be the Marquis and rather enjoying it, looked out of the carriage window and stared at the cat and then at the castle and went, and the cat said, and bowed again. Jack jumped out of the carriage, opened the door and bowed his very finest bow as the king and the princess stepped out. And Jack said, sire, my lady, would you do me the honour of resting here a while? The king looked at the castle and it was very impressive. And he said, well, well, yes, thank you. And he and the princess walked in to the castle and the cat said, forgive us for the mess, my lord, but we've only just moved in very recently and everything is a little topsy-turvy from the last owner who didn't look after it. But the cat led everybody out into the gardens and wine was bought and cake was bought for the servants were very pleased that their evil master, the ogre, was dead. And they had a lovely afternoon. Well, after that, the king and the princess were frequent visitors. And so when the miller's son, the Marquis, as he liked to be called, asked if he may marry the princess, the king was more than delighted. But you can be sure when it came to the wedding, it wasn't the oldest son or even the middle son who was the Marquis's best man. 
it was Puss wearing new boots and a new hat. <laughs>